So I've been using the Pixel Fold now for a few weeks and when it arrived, if you watched our unboxing, you probably saw like me being really giddy about this thing. I've, I've waited for a long time for it. So my expectations, my hopes were really high about how much I would love using a device that has this sort of functionality, uh, you know, long term. But as it turns out, not everything is perfect about this and not that I expected it to be, but ultimately when it comes down to it, I ended up feeling pretty relieved to put my SIM back into a normal slab smartphone. Now, it doesn't mean there aren't things I like about this, but there are definitely things I don't really like about it. And so I kind of want to share that stuff with you guys um, and talk about three things that I really, really like about this phone and three things that I really don't. So let's start with probably the most obvious thing about the Pixel Fold screens right I mean it's a folding phone so the biggest selling point here and it needs selling points it's eighteen hundred dollars so uh, you know it needs to it needs to perform well but the biggest selling point are the screens and you've got an outer screen that is a, a bit of a unique look uh, here in the states at least with folding phones uh, and then obviously the larger interior screen here and so let me talk about what I like about the screens first one the outer screen is kind of the size that makes more sense than something like uh, the Galaxy Z Fold 2, 3, 4, uh, and what looks like the 5 as well. Like Those phones have a really thin, tall screen, which I always found really awkward kind of to use. This one instead has a screen that looks a whole lot like the size that you'd see on something like this. This is like Pixel 4a, so a smaller smartphone. I mean, it obviously lines up here pretty well and actually is a little bit wider than this phone. So. You know, I found using the outer display uh, super comfortable. It's easy to type on. I mean, you can see the size of the, the keyboard when you go to type is very nice. Uh, it's 120 hertz out here. It's plenty bright. It gets, it gets bright enough for outdoor use and direct sunlight. Nothing to knock about the screen on the outside of this phone. Um, and that's maybe a little bit of a problem. We'll talk about that kind of in the second half here. Uh, but there's not a time when I was using this device that I felt like, you know, I, I don't like using or I'm not comfortable using the outer display. I've got to open up the phone to, to get stuff done. Matter of fact, I spent a lot of my time actually on this outer screen. And so uh, kudos to Google for making a, an outer screen on a folding phone that's actually nice to use and, and doesn't feel like a hindrance to the overall phone. And then, you know, when we open up the screen, there are some things to really like about the screen as well. Um, it's not all perfect, uh, and obviously a lot of people have you know complained about the bezels around it. And I'm going to talk about that in a second, and you know the crease that's here as I move it around, you can probably see it. Honestly, it's just like any other folding phone. Didn't really bother me day to day usage. When you're staring directly at it, you don't really notice it. And so if you're looking for you know a tablet kind of sized screen to have in your pocket, it's it's nice. There were times I watched content on this. I pulled up YouTube videos or Netflix. You can do uh, some zooming on both of those things. But if I pull up a video here, uh, I can't play it too long, but I'm just going to open this up. Let me turn this all the way down so we don't blow anything out. Um, you can see, you know, you get a pretty nice size screen here. I can zoom this in kind of to the center part of it and, and really take advantage of this larger screen real estate here if I wanted to. And so there were times that I found myself actually doing that kind of on a, on a regular basis where, you know, I'd sit and watch a video that normally I might not sit and watch entirely on my phone. You know, the speakers are really good on this thing. And, you know, that's, that's the second thing that, that I really did enjoy about this phone. The speakers are great. And so when you do decide to sit and watch some video on this, it's, it's actually pretty great on the bigger screen. And then finally, you know, the, the tablet UI you get when we open this thing up is reminiscent of what you see on the pixel tablet, if you've messed with that. And so it's kind of the newer version of Android on a big screen. And so, you know, the little things like uh, being in an app, for instance, if I have in Chrome, to be able to pull the little tray up here is very nice to be able to drag these across here and get multitasking going and then pull that between. If you're wanting to get multitasking done on a screen this size, I don't know that everybody will want to do that, uh, but you know, it's kind of a cool little trick. The tablet UI feels good. When you pull this down, you get notifications on one side and you get your quick settings on the other. A very cool thing as well. Like I like all that stuff and it's it's kind of a thoughtful UI for a tablet UI. But in you know Gmail, for instance, I can click 
and kind of triage emails a little bit quicker. So again, if you're somebody that likes to do this kind of work, a little bit of multitasking, a little bit of productivity on your phone, uh, instead of like a laptop or something like that, then the tablet UI is nice for those kind of things. But for all those likes, there's almost an exact thing that goes along with it that I just didn't like. And so since we're talking about kind of this tablet layout, let me talk to you about the stuff that I didn't really care for on this. And, and the number one thing, I wrote a post about this uh, over on the website. When you get web content pulled up on here, and, and, and this is on big sites too. It's not just like smaller sites that probably haven't thought about it. So I'm pulling up CNN right here. And hopefully you can look at this and realize like this, this isn't any good. Uh, additionally, you know, Chrome is, is showing me tabs up here, which I think is kind of silly on a screen this size. It wastes a ton of vertical real estate. Uh, but that's a Chrome issue, uh, tablet issue. But you can see the layout here is going fully side to side. There's no margins, no no columns going on here. This is uh, a terrible experience. And I found this to be true of 60 to 70% of the mobile web at this point. Now, as you can see, if I were to take this and then um, let me actually multitask here and put it side by side. Now, granted, it does this uh, at first because it was kind of loading in the full screen version, the, the the desktop version, but now it's not doing that. Again, you start to see the frustration that can come here. But if I go and get this to reload, it should. Mm. <laughs> Again, this is not the first time I've dealt with this. Like this is the kind of stuff when you, you sit down and start using it, this this stuff starts happening and it's, it's pretty frustrating. Uh, I, yeah, I don't really wanna look at that view either. I don't know. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do with that one. Um, but you can see something even like Google search. I mean, th this is okay, I guess, but it doesn't feel like it's taking advantage of the big screen. And so that's not just true of web content. It's true of applications too. So let me open something again, uh, a, a big application like, you know, Instagram, this is what you get. You know, you get, um, a, a, a phone sized viewport that frankly, isn't much bigger than something like this, the, the very small pixel 4a. And so it becomes really strange all of a sudden using this big screen because it's like, I, this isn't great because you know what? The better thing to do is just close this down and you know use this app on a phone screen kind of like it's meant to be used. And, and that's what I would do constantly is just close it down and use stuff out here. And now all of a sudden, guess what? You're using a smaller phone with a good screen. I said it's, it's one of the things I liked about this phone, but now you're using a small screen that's really thick and, and pretty heavy for a small phone. So you're not getting the benefit of a super uh, convenient portable phone. You're, you're having to kind of lug around this really large small screen phone. I uh, just didn't love that. And so it's not just Instagram. There's all kinds of apps that just don't work uh, with the with the larger screen on the inside. And so now you got bad experiences with web content, bad experiences with multiple apps. I mean, um, that part just wasn't great. And it, what happened for me was I would use stuff on this outer screen um, and, and feel compelled because I'm carrying this phone to figure out something I'm going to do on the internal screen. And a lot of times I would just open it up and sit and stare at the phone like, well, what am I going to do with this now? Like, what am I going to do with this screen real estate? Um, so a little strange there. Um, so I, I didn't care for that. And then when I did go to open it up to the big screen, one of the things that I looked forward to more than anything was playing games uh, on a device like this. And so while I'm kind of talking here, I'm just going to open this game up. So this is Farlight, but games like this, PUBG Mobile, PUBG New State, basically any game other than Call of Duty Mobile has an issue with the gyroscope on here. Now, I, I talked to Google. They said it was on the developers to fix it. And developers are saying, you know, like the, the game is listening to the phone and, and, and doing what it needs to do. I don't know who's at fault. Uh, it needs to get fixed, though, obviously. And it's a problem we've had with Chromebooks for a long time. Because the outer screen is still in portrait, I think the phone still thinks it's in portrait, kind of, or at least the gyroscope part does. So what happens is the gyroscope thinks it's in portrait, the inside of the phone thinks it's in landscape, and so you get a 90 degree shift with gyroscope. So if you have a game that does gyro aiming, uh, which most you know, uh, first person shooters do, uh, what you run into and that's running really nicely. It looks good. And the inner screen looks great and you got all this space and you can see, but guess what? If I tilt up and down, look, it goes left, right. If I tilt left, right, it goes up and down. And if I were to turn the phone and get it to, let's see if it'll let me do it. 
it'll stay this way for a minute, but it's going to leave this pop up here because it's like, man, eh, we don't like that. Um, you see the gyro is fixed now. So the gyro is staying aligned with the outer screen basically, which is now in landscape mode. And so I know that's a bit of a niche thing. Um, I get that, but it's enough of a thing that one of the big reasons I had to open the screen up and use the big screen for me personally was gaming. Like that's one of the things I looked forward to doing. I loved playing all these types of games on an iPad mini. This is basically an iPad mini screen in my pocket. And so I really, really looked forward to that. And it doesn't really work. And then there's little stuff like, so play books. I'm going to open it up in this, in this format. Look, it's, it's stuck in, in this. And it, it's so frustrating. I can get it to go in a column view with, with two pages down the sides. If I go and change the screen resolution, but who's going to do that every time they open an application up? I mean, it's just, it's a bunch of goofy things, one on top of another that just make me a little frustrated trying to use this phone on a daily basis. Like once the whole, like, wow, I can open it and I got a big screen, but what am I going to use it for? And so at the end of the day, that's kind of where I've gotten with this thing. I found myself constantly using the outer screen all the time. And if I'm going to just use the outer screen, why am I carrying this thing around? And at $1,800, uh, it, it makes it, I don't know, a little questionable uh, as far as something that I can recommend everyone go buy. Now, if you're somebody that is saying like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to use email all the time. I'm going to triage email constantly. I'm, um, I'm at a bit of a loss for what else you would use the inner screen for. But if you like a small tablet, a small Android tablet specifically, then, then maybe this is a great fit for you. Then maybe this is a great device. But I do think that something like the Surface Duo 2, so a friend of mine let me borrow this just for this. Um, I think something like this probably fits a lot of people better, even though I don't know how easily you can get a hold of one of these anymore. Uh, but it splits everything into two screens. It's not trying to be one big screen. It really splits everything always into two screens. Uh, maybe something like that's a little better for productivity, but you know, I, I wanted to love the pixel fold way more than I do. And at the end of my period with it, I just had to grip the fact that I don't, I don't love it. Um, and I don't know that it's this hardware. Um, I don't, I don't think that it's, it's all oh, the, the pixel folds no good and other foldables would be great. I really do think it comes down to just the foldable form factor and what Android on a tablet is like for right now. But that's a chicken and egg problem. So it, I don't know that that many people are going to own this kind of device. I don't know that that many people are owning Android tablets to get developers on board to make better experiences, to get web developers on board to make sure that their web content looks good on this size of screen. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know when that's going to happen. And so. If you're thinking about buying this phone, if you're thinking about spending the kind of money you'd have to spend to get this foldable phone or even a Galaxy Z Fold, I think all the same stuff applies here. Google did a great job building some really gorgeous hardware. Uh, I wrote a post on the site. I dropped this off a golf cart. It survived with no problem whatsoever. The, the case took a little bit of a dink, but it, it did just fine on a really, really bad drop, like as bad as I've probably ever dropped a, a smartphone. Uh, so it's built really well. The hinge uh, feels really great and is, is reminiscent of what I really loved about what Microsoft's done here is that it's it's got tension at every angle. No matter what you do with it, it's always got tension. And you can see uh, the similarity here between these two hinges. If Hopefully we can pick that up on camera. That, like you can see, they kind of borrowed from what Microsoft did. And so it makes a, a really great hinge mechanism. Like the hardware feels great. I think Google did a great job of building this phone. Uh, but in the end, the, the problem really comes down more to whether or not this is the right type of form factor for you as someone who might buy something like this. And I can't answer that for you. All I can tell you is that in my experience, when I moved my SIM from this back to a standard smartphone, uh, I just felt more comfortable. I felt at ease. I felt relief. Um, and so I don't know what that means for me in folding phones in the future, but for right now, I can tell you Google's made a really great piece of hardware. It's built very well. And if you know that this is something that you're going to enjoy from a form factor standpoint, and you already know that you love using Android tablets and you don't mind carrying around a little bit more of a heavy phone and you don't care to spend a little bit more money on it, you might find a lot of practicality in this. But for me, it just wasn't the right fit. But guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up head down there, hit that subscribe button, and be sure and ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.